this episode, we take a seat in the lap of luxury when I check out five limousines that really stretch belief. It's branded Trump series right on the emblem. We've got ultimate luxury. This setup alone makes me want to get it right now. Get ultimately ridiculous. It's like driving the coolest semi truck ever built. There's a lot of stress and a lot of expense. And go ultimately anywhere. Top speed is probably a little bit over 100. Get ready to pick your jaw off the floor. You don't really want to do a three point turn in it. I wanted to see what was the biggest, most impractical vehicle I can build. Millionaire life, private jets to exotic locations, making big money deals. But when the plane hits the tarmac back home, there's only one ride that feels like you're still flying high. The limo jet. Oh, man. My name is Frank D'Angelo, and behind me I have the limo jet. The limo jet is a Learjet fuselage. Uh, that has been retrofitted into a vehicle at street legal and one of the only ones on the planet. This baby won't take to the sky, but man, the features are first class. Frank's team specializes in creating unique concept vehicles for customers looking for the ultimate ride. And for this one, they turned a Learjet into a limo. It took over 100 people to bring Frank's crazy dream to life and he partnered up with racing experts to give the Jet Limo a super slick finish. This baby is touring the country looking for a buyer who thinks big. A lot of the parts that we made were custom, so you know the springs were custom made. A lot of the suspension came from the one-ton pickup truck that we had. Uh, some of the lighting came from Jeep. There's a little bit of a lot of different vehicles. It's probably three or four different types that have been married into this one. Uh, we spent well over a million dollars to get it to where it's at. And a million bucks buys a whole lot of luxury. Um, you would start it like a regular car. So you put in the key, start it, crank it up, and you drive it like a regular car. You got your gas, you got your brake. These four panels here, cameras on the fenders, you can actually see everything that's going on in the back. And then we have all the toggle switches to give it a little bit of an aircraft feel. So all the light, disco lighting, disco floor, all the exterior lighting, everything is controlled from here. But customizing a jet ain't easy. So the interior, everything's curved. So we couldn't use any templates or we couldn't go up anything. We had to hand make everything. We start with the disco ceiling up here. We did it this way so that when people riding, they can see that you're really in a jet fuselage. So we put some custom plexiglass pieces. We lit it up with some LED lightings. People really get a kick out of that. We have the big screen TV in the back with the sound system. We have the infinity floor, which was a nice touch. People love it. Eight passengers is the capacity in the back, plus the driver. So we kind of say nine passengers. Not sure about the math, Frank, but who cares with this sound system? I'm going to go ahead and raise these flaps. So if you take a look in the back, we have two separate sound systems. So we have an interior and we have an exterior. It booms pretty good. You have your 12-inch subwoofer in here. Inside, this is basically just a giant speaker box at the end of the day. So we wanted a little bit of afterburner look in here so that they can either blink or you can just keep them on straight with nothing on over here. And for a big ride, this baby can really shift. Top speed is probably a little bit over 100. I mean, any V8 engine is going to hit 140, 150, but this weighs over 12,000 pounds. We've got our tickets. Time to join Frank's business partner in the cockpit. It's like driving something I've never drove before. I mean, it's like driving the coolest semi truck ever built. Yo, brother, you forgot the wings. OK, so this thing oozes style inside and out. Let's see what kind of speed this Learjet limo is packing. All 
All right, get ready for takeoff. Here we go, brother. Uh, and nope. Can't go too far on this runway. Gentlemen, please don't tease the count. OK, if I had a big enough parking space to buy this thing, what would be the damage? All the research and development that went into this, somebody would have to offer me over $5 million. Whoa, man. For that price, you could get yourself a real plane. I don't have any regrets. Even though it took a long time, um, I'm happy that we're here now. From a millionaire's masterpiece to the Donald's Daily Driver. It ain't no stretch to say this next ride was once owned by the most powerful man in the free world. A man who believes the biglier the car, the better. And one will stick his name on absolutely everything. This is the 1988 Cadillac Trump Executive Series limousine. It's one of only two prototypes that were ever built. Before he put his name in the history books as the 45th president, Donald Trump put his name to water, golf courses, and even steak. But back in the 80s, he partnered with Cadillac on maybe the world's greatest limo. New York coach builder Dillinger Gaines took the classic 88 Cadillac Rome and reimagined it as Trump's ultimate ride. The Trump limo is something that we had to have here at the museum because we're about history, about celebrity-owned cars. And this car kind of wraps it up in both. Trump being Trump, he wanted this ride to be the most opulent limousine ever. This thing was built with one very important passenger in mind, himself. Cadillac got with Trump, and they slayed it off for a lot of them to be built. But after the two prototypes were built, they ended the project. Trump has uh, you know, his version of why the project was canceled. Cadillac has their version of why they canceled. But uh, I guess we'll never know the truth. <laughs> Whatever went down, this stretch has still got style for every mile. It's branded Trump Series right on the emblem. You can see the roof line, instead of going down, the roof line starts going up. It doesn't follow the, the line of the window because they raised the roof for extra headroom. Got to protect that hair. The gold-plated emblems on the back, gold-plated phone antenna, the gold brome gold pinstripe, Trump keys. Let me guess. Gold plated. With this executive baby, no expense was spared, inside or out. Uh, is it cool in here or is it cool in here? It's definitely something. You've got your electric bar here. You just put in your glass. You got buttons here. You just pick your own poison. All this is real wood. Got little picnic tables that come out. So you got your beverage. Here's your 1980s stereo system with your equalizer and your cassette stereo. Okay, here is the hidden safe. Perfect for those important documents you don't want found. This brush was found in the car when we got it. I'm not saying it's Donald Trump's, but I'm not saying it's not either. With the design of the limo, Trump was determined to make limos great again. Now some custom touches up in the front here. The steering wheel uh, is a custom steering wheel that was added. It's got the phone down below, the plush carpet. And when you're driving, you, know, you get to look at the Cadillac Trump Series branded logo staring right at you. Of course it is. All right, but with all the bling set aside, how does this baby really ride? Well, the car is uh, rather smooth. The engine is, is quiet. Uh, it's very responsive. Yeah, the car doesn't have uh, a whole lot of kick. It's not a, a sports car by any means. The cars from the uh, 1980s, they definitely have their place in history. They're very excessive. This car is an example. Uh, this just takes me back to the Miami Vice days. Doesn't this guy know there's no stopping Trump? <laughs> From a top dollar ride to a mini romance.
Limos are big rides. They're all about making big statements. But over in England, one dude is doing things differently with a stretch mini. This pocket-sized ride might not have all the limo bling, but there's a lot of heart and soul in this custom. I had a classic mini, and uh, I joined a mini club. I met Chris. Then you asked me out. I shot a date. And the rest is history. These lovebirds wanted to arrive at the venue in style. I'd say it was my idea. I thought it would be a nice wedding car for us, seeing as the minis brought us together. But we struggled to find one, didn't we? we did. So Chris thought he would just build one. <laughs> Easy. And the lover's dream soon became a workshop reality. They had big plans for this little car, but the Mini is one of the most iconic British vehicles ever produced. You gotta respect the vibe. Chris and Venora worked together for three months, hoping to make the ultimate ride in time for their special day. A lot of the assembly of the car, she recovered all the interior. Working very late at night, working weekends on it, there was a lot of stress and a lot of expense. <laughs> it was ready three days before the wedding. It made the wedding. It did make the wedding, yeah. It made it very personal to us, didn't it? Yeah. Beautiful stuff. But has the stretch ride got any extra features? You'll see that we have an extra door. This door is exactly the same size door as this one. For me, the word limo conjures up images of luxury, which isn't really what you get when you own a Mini. This is about love, not luxury. We've got electric windows in the back and central locker on the rear door so there's no locks. Inside, we've got two rear-facing seats. These were donated from a Land Rover Discovery. The seats out the back that fold down. The rear seat has actually been extended by four inches to make it four inches deeper. Right, let's take it for a spin. Because it's got a longer wheelbase, rides bumps more smoothly, and it's got a bit more stability. We have a slightly modified 1275 GT engine. This has been bored out to 1293, and then it's got a long gearbox in it so that it cruises at a high speed quite nicely, and with a few extra trick bits on it just to give it a bit more power. Guys, you nailed it. This car is part of my life now. My kids love it. They regularly wanted to go out for picnics and drives around. It's fun. It may not handle that well, but this little limo does make a big impression. It gets a lot of attention wherever you go. People love the car. Guess this is not a standard engine in here. Not standard, no. No, right, no. OK. It's got a longer gearbox in it now and a longer Nothing gear. like two gearheads talking about one sweet stretch mini. Okay. It's got a... Man, everyone loves this ride. Chris, you've built the ultimate mini limo. Well, almost. You don't really want to do a three-point turn in it. It's really heavy on the steering. There is no power steering, and it's long. You really just want to back it up until you find somewhere where there's a space to back it into. The perfect ride for all the family, except maybe for parking. From a British beauty to an Italian stallion. The Maserati is rocking a three-liter twin-turbo V6 engine built by Ferrari, packing over 400 horsepower. It goes zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds. You expect speed. You expect sophisticated Italian sports car design. You don't expect enough space for half a hockey team.
This custom is the Maserati Limo. My name is Jay Glick. Welcome to our beautiful Maserati stretch limousine. Jay's New Jersey Limo Company have built a ride that truly stands out from the competition. It's elegant, it's sporty, it's modern, it's sleek. As soon as you get in this car, you know you're not in a regular limo. There's nothing else that stands out like it. So the car's been literally cut in half. All the stock drivetrain, electrical, braking, all the stock components, all that has been extended 130 inches. The Maserati cost a cool $75,000 and almost twice as much to customize it. But Jay's got a ride that really turns heads. One of the fastest limos on the planet. Even better, the rental fee on this baby is up to 1,200 bucks a day. Nice. So a couple of years ago, I was trying to come up with a replacement unique vehicle of that, something no one had, something I haven't seen before. I wanted to come up with something that'd be really recognizable to people and just kind of give people some excitement. The ultimate ride for race night or prom night. This car actually surprisingly handles very well. This thing still kind of corners like it's on rails, which is pretty amazing. Just from the sound, the feel, it drives unlike any other limousine out there. It's got luxury and speed, and boy, is it a crowd pleaser. I think it just looks smart. The leather, everything about it, it's just, it looks really, really rich. You know, it's a really nice car. Can I drive it? <laughs> <laughs> you can't Uber one of these, that's for nah. sure. Yo, imagine this an Uber now. <laughs> Yo, you a killer. This setup balloon makes me want to get it right now. Probably can put about nine people in here comfortably. Touch screen, everything. Lights on the ceiling. Right out of the gate, we wanted to do something that was unique to the outside of the vehicle when you step into the vehicle. Features the diamond stitch pattern on all the seating with double stitching, letting you know you're in something special. It's the only one around, it's the only one in the country. Only one in the country? Yeah, it's the only one. I like it too, man. Limousines are just all about not just taking a ride, but having a special ride. I hear you, brother man. Bring that baby to Vegas. From a slick modern build to a homemade hero. Forest in Oregon is pretty much the last place you'll see a limousine. Hi there, my name is Jordan Foster, and this is the USS Compensator. I've always wanted a limo for a long time. I've always saw limos and thought they were really unique rigs. Howdy, howdy. Can I get a large ice water, please? I use it for just driving around, showing it off, showing off my hobby, my project, my work so far. And it's uh, just an impractical vehicle that can be daily, and luckily enough, is street legal in, in the state of Oregon. So what gives Jordan the about this limo? I love the six-foot longhorns. They are kind of my pride and joy. Come on up, it won't hurt. The USS Compensator is unofficially the tallest Lincoln Town Car in the United States. It took just three months to complete and only cost Jordan a mere 8,000 bucks. But how did he get this bad boy street legal? It has massive mud flaps. One question, brother man, why? Why not? This is a one of a kind rig, and it was more of a to challenge myself than anything else. I wanted to see what was the biggest, most impractical vehicle I can build. And what's bigger and longer than a limo, nonetheless, a lifted limo. Have you ever had a waterbed before? 
no, I've, I've sat in one. Have you? Yeah. Well, this is like on a waterbed, if you know what I mean. That's the ride quality of this thing. Huh. That an official review? The USS Compensator handles like a cruise ship on choppy water. The car is not useful. It's hard to park. It's hard to drive around town. I got to watch my corners, watch my blind spots at all times. Just for driving, I have a camera mounted in the front and mounted in the rear. I typically keep them on at all times when I'm driving down the road, but that's the fun of it. I love the challenge of navigating through town. It's like an off-road course inside city limits. Kind of like challenging myself to see where the limo can go, where it can't go. So, with all this length and height, is this vehicle compensating for something? So, <laughs> the name's pretty self-explanatory. Stretch limo flare at its finest. So when prom time comes around, just know you got a few more options. We'll see you next time on Ultimate Rides.